Throughout my life, I've had a few pen pals. My first was a girl named Aaliyah from South Africa. We were first paired through my school's social studies program at random. She and I only ever exchanged one letter each, and that's where it ended, because my teacher handed back my second letter to me at the end of the school year and said that it wasn't able to be sent. The next year, we had a new round of pen pals through school, and I was paired with Elenia from Italy. We bonded over favorite classes, hobbies, and somehow the bipolar Michigan weather popped up in conversation. Again, we only ever exchanged one letter each, and that was the end of it. A few months before I moved to Kansas from Michigan, I brought up the idea of pen palling to a few of my close friends. Though I received and sent letters to some of my friends with no response, one did stick. In almost two years, 25 plus letters, and a few postcards later, all it took was one person sending that next letter back. My name is Eileen, and today I'm going to be sharing how I write to my pen pal and how you can get started too. There's a big misconception that pen paling requires all these fancy pens and beautiful handwriting to accompany it. And although I enjoy watching videos from these YouTube channels that are dedicated to the literal art form of pen palling, in reality, all you need is a pen and paper. And that's it. It's really all about preference and how many or how little tools you actually want to use. Here are the tools that I like to use. I like to write the bulk of my letters in blue or black pen. Sometimes I'll use a pencil if I'm feeling like it, and I also like to use fun highlighters or just any markers to spice up my letters a little bit. And of course, you can't forget my smiley eraser that I've probably had since elementary school. Now we'll get into what I do when I receive a letter. I just got this letter in the mail a couple of days ago and I've just covered up the front here, um, so you don't know where I live, you know? <laughs> By the way, I'm the absolute worst at opening letters, so don't feel bad if you struggle a little bit. We can struggle together. It'll be great. <laughs> now, this is the fun part because I get to read about what's going on in my friend's life. Though we both have phones and could text each other in an instant, there's something really special about setting aside time to write to a friend. I find that we are able to be more raw and realistic about the things that are going on in our lives, and that it's a really great way to bond and learn even more about each other, more than we ever thought we knew. Though we still Skype each other about once a month to supplement face-to-face -face interactions, which is very important for mental health during these times to just stay connected and virtually see each other's faces during these tough quarantine times. The letters really hold a special place in my heart. Here's what I do when I actually write my letter. I typically use any journal that I have with lined paper. This happens to be my YouTube video ideas journal, but it's secret! Anyway, I open up just to a random unused page in the middle of the notebook and get crack a lacking. One other thing I like to do sometimes when I write is listen to this study playlist that I made on Spotify. It has a lot of piano and cello tunes from movie soundtracks that I really love, so it can be nice to listen to this on low volume while I write. I'll link it in the description box if you're into that. Also, these are my ratchet headphones that literally cracked in half and now they're being held together by electrical tape. So there's a fun fact for you, I guess. <laughs> Now, here comes the next fun part, which is actually responding to the letter. My friend and I kind of came up with this unofficial format that we like to use when we write, but again, it's all about preference and whatever format works for you. I like to start by putting the full day and date in the upper right corner of the page, and then I write my greeting right on the open header line. On the first page, I respond to what she talked about in her letter and answer any questions that she might have asked me. Then I like to draw a line as sort of a break in the page to separate my response to her letter with what's going on in my life. And then I tell her what's been happening with me. There can be a lot of good things that I share, but I don't shy away from telling her about the bad things that happen in life too. Keeping things raw and real only makes our friendship stronger and it helps us grow as people too. 
So once the letter is done, I like to go back in and highlight these little hearts and faces that I put in my letters. Which, you know, this makes me wonder, back in the day when all they had was letter writing, did they put little winky faces in their letters too? I say, why not? <laughs> Anyway, at the end of each letter, I ask her to update me on what's been going on with her, and then we like to do this little song recommendation. This time, I recommended that she listen to Rain by Patty Griffin, which is a song from my childhood that I rediscovered recently. And sometimes I like to draw lines on the side or add color to my letter just for the fun of it, but that's really it for writing the actual letter. Here, I'll talk about what I do to send the letter out. At this point, I fold up the pages twice, let them levitate into the envelope, and then I'm good to go. But sometimes, I like to make these little pieces of confetti out of sticky notes by cutting them into strips and then cutting those into smaller pieces. It's just another way that I like to spice up the letter and make it a fun celebration. <laughs> I can just imagine my friend opening this up and having to clean up the mess from this. After that, you lick that sucker up, try not to choke on the chemicals from the glue, and fold it down. To the best of your ability, of course. Mine is not very good. <laughs> now I'll show you how I write the addresses on the front of the envelope. Most people might know how to do this, however, in this digital age, there might be some people who do not. You'll need an envelope, a pen, and a drink of choice. Of course, I choked on my lovely soda here. <laughs> <coughs> in the upper left corner of the envelope, this is where you write your own name and address. On the first line, you write your name. On the second line, you write your full address. If you live in an apartment like I do, you can put this at the very end of this line, like APT24, for example. Under that, you put your city, your state, and then your five-digit zip code. Not entirely sure how this works internationally, but maybe some knowledgeable peeps in the comments can help people out who are wondering. Now, for your pen pal's address, you write this in the middle of the envelope, just a little bit bigger than the one in the corner. This is the same order of information as before, but with your pen pal's information instead. I, of course, chose to use the most famous address of them all, P. Sherman 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Mine is the Sydney part. After that, you slap a nice stamp up in the upper right corner and you're good to go. Now more than ever, I cherish taking walks to the mailbox because it gives me an excuse to be outside for a little bit. So go call up your friends, family, lovers, let them know you want to start pen palling with them, and go write up a storm. That's it for today. Hope you found this little part of my life slightly interesting. I also want to say thank you for almost 50 subscribers. That's absolutely wild that people actually watch and sort of like my videos. So thank you for supporting me and my work. Okie dokie. Talk to you again soon. Peace.